Okay, so uh, let's proceed on to second order reaction. Now, for second order reaction, right, rate of reaction is directly proportional to the square of the concentration of the reactant. Uh, so what this means is that when the reactant doubles, the concentration of the reactant doubles, all right, your rate actually increases by four times. Okay, so what happens if your concentration of reactant triples? All right, if it triples, your rate will actually increase by nine times. All right, so the square of three is nine. All right, so I think you can carry on postulating if it concentration of reactant quadruples, the rate will actually increase by four square, all right, which is 16 times. All right, so graphically, what it means is that when we increase the concentration of the reactant, the rate will actually increase exponentially, all right, it's not directly proportional. However, if we were to plot rate versus the square of the reactant, you will actually get a straight line. All right. So for second order reaction, uh, you do not have a constant half life. In fact, the half life will be increasing. Okay. So this summary, right, is basically what we have gone through so far. I will not be going through it one by one because uh, you can always rewind the recording uh, from part one to do that. All right, so I'll leave it to you to cover this part on your own. All right, we will move on from here. All right, so let's now talk about pseudo first order. All right, uh, pseudo is a Greek word for false. All right, so for a second order reaction, right, overall, it can be hard to follow because then you will need to monitor either the two reactants. Okay, so if one of the reactants' uh, concentration is uh, in large excess, then we can uh, we can ignore the change in its concentration. All right, so we take the concentration to be constant, and the reaction will be appear to be zero order with respect to that reactant. So, for example, if we have this uh, rate equation, right, and we put a to large excess. All right, we increase the concentration of A to like a, a, a very big amount. All right, then essentially, right, our rate will be equals to K prime concentration of B, where K prime is equals to the original rate constant times concentration of A. All right, this can also be the case if A is a catalyst. All right, which actually brings us to uh, the meaning of doing this it means that this then becomes a pseudo first order reaction with respect to b all right and a graph of concentration of b against time will have a constant half life okay if we have a constant half life we can actually use this particular formula which is only applicable for first order reaction all right, and if we subsequently sub in the concentration of A, we can find the original rate constant. Okay, so if you use this method, right, uh, you need to take note the T half, right, is only affected by the reactant that is in large excess. All right, so if you look at this particular uh, formula, you realize that the one in excess is the one that is in the formula. All right, uh, like concentration of A. Concentration of B is not even inside this formula. All right, so uh, the T half is not affected by it. All right, so this is something that is uh, counterintuitive and some students don't actually realize that. Okay, so 